How's it going guys, Kels Prime here, another day, another Anthem video and today we have much to talk about, especially in the realm of progression. We will touch on loot and their tables, servers and more, so if you find this useful, a like rating would be greatly appreciated and if you're new, don't forget to subscribe for more Anthem news. So let's start with the big one, servers. Anthem will have dedicated servers, no peer to peer here. They wanted dedicated servers so the server time can remain consistent and constant. So what you see will always be what others see. It will not vary. This is a pretty amazing thing. It means you're going to get the best experience you possibly can. Really impressed with this decision. Something I was a little disappointed with was the decision to not have strongholds drop specific loot. Instead, there will be loot tables and the content you're doing and difficulty of said content will dictate the chance of rarity gear you get. With this, Bioware hope the lucrative loot and difficulty challenge you're gonna face will be the carrot to keep you coming back. Now for me, I would have preferred to have certain strongholds with certain specific loot having a higher drop chance. Like for example in the new Last Wish raid in Destiny, if you're looking for a specific raid weapon, each of the encounters have a higher chance of dropping said weapon. The vault for example has a higher chance of dropping the bow. So something like this would have been really nice. However, the fact that they're going for this approach means they're aiming for you to tackle any content you want, have the variety of any content you want, so it's not a bad thing, it's just something I personally would have preferred to see different. With that out of the way, let's move on to progression. Progression starts simple, and then can get scarily complex with insanely amazing rewards as you start to synergize your abilities. Yes, you heard that right, you can actually synergize your abilities. Instead of leveling up your exo suit, your javelin, instead you level up your pilot. So once your pilot is level 30, all your javelins have all slots open. At level 1 you only have 2 slots open, and then these open up more and more as you level up. Pretty awesome if you ask me, and a step in the right direction for all to follow. No one wants to get to level 30 4 times, it's just not fun, and honestly, you've done it once, you've done it all times. You want people to replay story campaigns? Simple. Give them the option to on the map. I like this idea. As you play the game, weapons and components drop from all content. These weapons and items will have an item level that restricts the user to them. Nothing special here and it's a normal system that is commonly associated with these sorts of games. The items also have a rarity associated with them. These range from common, uncommon, rare, epic, masterworks and legendary, with masterworks and legendary dropping in the grandmaster difficulty range. With weapon trading, they have opted to go the route of destiny and not the division. Weapon trading will not be a thing sadly, however to counteract this and ease RNG some, they have added blueprint recipes to craft items. You can craft up to legendary gear which is the highest but expect the material cost to reflect this. The devs however wanted to reiterate that this will not be your go to option but a supplement if your RNG is bad and you desperately need a piece for that build you're making. Blueprints will always be crafted to the level you're currently on. If you get a blueprint at level 5 and you craft it at level 22, that item will be a level 22 and not a level 5. Again, another great design choice here. Rerolling is something that has been requested, however the devs have been very open and said rerolling will not be a thing. Not now and not in the future. It's not something that they're looking at in the grand scheme of Anthem. The crafting here in Anthem is their supplement and their response to that desire to give you more options should you choose to farm the materials. This also means you will need a decent sized inventory space which they have said what you will have will be enough. They advise against hoarding as the weapons and components you pick up will house the materials you need to create stuff with blueprints, so by doing it this way it maintains a healthy cycle for inventory should you ever max out with stuff. You are still earning stuff as you dismantle items for space and parts. This brings me on to the next topic, gear score. They have gone the route of the division with this and why not, it's a perfectly good system and does the job, easy to understand and works a treat. The gear score you have will not only dictate your content entry level, but your actual power as well. Pretty cool stuff. Finally, despite XP being shared, loot is individual and not shared and will drop to individual pools, which is fine, 
I would have preferred a division like trading system at the end of a round, but I, or even a traditional MMO type thing where everything just drops into a pool and you can choose what you want between friends. I understand if you're matchmaking, it should drop directly into your pool, but if you're going with a pre made match team with friends, I think it should have just dropped into a pool where you could basically pick what you wanted and share what you didn't want. I think that would have been a better system, and who knows? Maybe for the future, they are very receptive when it comes to public opinion and public suggestions. So maybe this will be a thing going forward. Next, we move on to loadouts. Yes, we have loadouts. I mean, is there anything Anthem isn't checking off here? Trading would have been the perfect topping. I think if that was a thing, but sadly it's not. But still, loadouts are awesome. Each javelin has five items that they can have things equipped to, and these items all have specific stats that in one way or another enhance the build the player is going for. As you can see the weapon being shown here has the fire element, and this will not only do fire based elemental damage, but it will also add a fire based vulnerability on the enemy. What does this mean? Well I'm glad you asked as this now brings forward the combo system Anthem is bringing with each javelin having its own unique combo system or style as it were. So what is a combo? A combo is an extra attack that you can do that is only available on high level gear. Certain equipment that you get, masterworks and going forward will have a special inscription that allows you to do a combo. These combos will then add an additional effect and do even more damage. A combo is unique to each javelin as I mentioned earlier, so let's go through those combo specific actions now. The Colossus when doing a combo deals mass AOE damage. The Ranger deals a high impact single target blast which is pretty awesome and fits perfectly with the Ranger. Storm chains damage to all nearby enemies. And finally, Interceptor gains the aura of the vulnerability and passes it on to all nearby enemies, inflicting damage as it does. Whether it primes them or not wasn't said, but that would be insanely OP and cool if it did. So okay, combos sound cool, but is that all they enable? Specific actions to trigger? Of course not. If you combo, you're also doing an increased amount of damage. For example, if I applied a flame vulnerability to the enemy and you use detonation, an ability that ignites fire further, your combo will do increased damage. So synergy is very important here when playing with friends. Next, I will touch on masterworks and legendary gear. All Masterworks gear will have a static special ability. For example, one item states if you defeat an enemy with the ability on RB or R1 for PlayStation, your LB or L1 for PlayStation ability will gain 50% more damage. I'll go into how this can synergize later, but this is pretty damn awesome when used correctly. Every item can have inscriptions, and this is where the random rolls come in. Common and uncommon can only have one inscription. Rare can have two. Epic can have 3, Masterworks and Legendary can have 4. Inscriptions are essentially additional stats that assist you, for example, increase fire damage, more damage, to increase airtime while flying. However, finding the perfect inscription will be what will keep you coming back, much like the division. So what's the difference between Masterworks and Legendary gear, you may ask? Not much actually, it's just a level up from Masterworks. It essentially just increases the stats of Masterworks gear. It just makes it a plus one gear type, if you played games like Final Fantasy XI, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. Best of all, inscriptions stack, so if you have a 5% flying inscription, and then you have another piece that gives you another 5% flying time, it's additive, so you get 10% flying time in total. Perfect for that build designed for flying and hovering I'm about to get into. Components are the final item I want to touch on, and these are designed to tailor a specific playstyle, and much like weapons and stuff, components can have up to two inscriptions. And an example of these was given on stream with them ranging from bigger explosions, more ammo, more hover flight time, to weapon damage up, and even decreased cooldowns. If you look at the cooldown of the grenade, then look how fast it is when hovering. You can appreciate the importance of these said components and how important they are. At max rarity, 
and level, you can equip up to six components to make your playstyle truly unique and amazing. This opens up a whole min-maxing side of things that kept people playing The Division for so long. Along with this, it also opens up the opportunity for some truly amazing, awesome, sexy synergy that you can do when it all comes together. Here is an example of what you can do. So we have an item that gives us more flight time. So jump and hover in midair. So now we can hover for a longer period. A component equipped halves your cooldowns as we saw with the whole hovering with the cooldown going faster. So that grenade you just tossed will recharge faster. Another component has increased weak point damage while hovering, which is what we're doing anyway. So while hovering, you're doing now more damage and your cooldowns are going faster. Your Masterworks weapon states defeating an enemy with the right bumper ability gives the left bumper ability 50% more damage for 3 seconds. So let's recap here, we've got more hover time, we've got faster cooldowns, we've got higher precision damage in the air. Now if we attack something with the right ability, the left bumper ability will gain 50% more damage. So right bumper ability does missile damage and defeats an enemy. Now you shoot the left bumper, which has in this instance the grenade launcher equipped. It does 50% more damage, which is insane by the way. Now, it even synergizes further. If you get a double kill, you get your shields and health back instantly. If you get a triple kill, you get a massive chunk of your super back. I mean, this is just a quick build that they put together talking about it on the stream. And when you just consider the possibilities here, you've got six different component slots that you can add just to your components outside of the original five items that you can equip to your exo your javelin can be customized to any way you want glass cannon full support hybrid tank you name it you can do whatever you want you can even synergize it to a way where you can buff other characters like i was mentioning with support so an interceptor for example does a lot of melee damage if i was a colossus and i wanted to give you a buff to enhance your melee damage for five seconds, I could do that if I wanted to spec into that and be that sort of player. This opens up a whole new gateway. And best of all, as I mentioned above, because your pilot level is the one that levels up, once you hit level 30, all your javelins already have all the items unlocked because they are already at max level. Your javelins are not restricted to the leveling system that many other games do instead once your pilot is 30 it's 30 and that's it you've done the grind now enjoy the game finally a cool addition is the environment i mean they really thought of everything overheating will be a thing in anthem however the lakes around you can be used to cool down faster and get you back in the fight i mean how awesome is that using your environmental terrain to actually benefit you and bring you faster and quicker into the fight when you have to retreat i mean these sort of things are really really amazingly well thought about so yeah i mean like the progression system here sounds amazing i'm really looking forward to tinkering with this and creating some awesome builds for you guys Excited or not, you can't deny Anthem is really making headways when it comes to sheer deliverables. So much here, but I hope this was educational for you all and gives you all a better insight into the world of Anthem. Thanks for watching. To stay up to date, you can follow me on the Twitter and Instagram. Details in the description below. I'll see you all in the next Anthem video. But just remember, the customization in this game is vast. The way the game is designed is designed to pretty much feed on your your inner child that wants to constantly tweak and tweak and tweak until you get that perfect javelin and until i get my perfect javelin i will not stop tweaking and i will not stop hunting until next video guys remain legend <laughs>